The goal of this problem is for you to derive and then get a sense of the performance at cruise while flying at different altitudes. So let's start by running what we were given. The weight of the aircraft the area of the wing, which we use as the reference area aspect ratio and we're going to also use the parabolic drag model and for that we'll use span efficiency of 0.8 and a drag at zero lift CD0 of 0.05. Now all of the values will be computing for both altitudes so I'm going to make a little table here so I have 12,000 feet and 35,000 feet. So we're given the density for infinity and those are slugs per cubic foot in the English system of units. Speed of sound at that altitude, feet per second. So 1.6 10 to the minus 3 for the density at 12,000 feet and the speed of sound is 1,069 feet per second. Now at 35,000 feet density is 7.3 times 10 to the minus 4 slugs per cubic foot and you'll notice that as you increase altitude the density decreases and 973 feet per second for the speed of sound of that altitude. So when you're traveling on a commercial airliner, of course, you don't want to spend too much time flying. What you want is to get to your destination. And also the cost of operating that flight increases with flight time. So you have to pay for the crew. You have to have that plane that is not being used for the routes. So commercial airlines want to fly as fast as they can. Now, the problem with flying too fast is that as you approach the speed of sound, the drag increases sharply, and we'll be seeing this when we study compressible flows. But the bottom line is that you want to fly as fast as possible without hitting the drag wall that you're going to see close to Mach 1. You're going to be flying at Mach 0.85 or something like that, which is what most commercial airliners use. So I'll put that here. So M infinity is going to be 0.85 so that's what we're going to use for both altitudes so the first thing of course we need to compute the velocity that's a simple one v infinity is 0.85 so the Mach number times the speed of sound at that altitude so you're going to plug speed of sound at 12,000 feet speed of sound at 35,000 feet and I'm just going to put that in my table here V infinity nine hundred eight point six for twelve thousand feet, and if I use nine hundred seventy three feet per second for the speed of sound at thirty five thousand feet, that gives me eight hundred twenty seven point zero feet per seconds. I'm going to try to keep the number of significant digits consistent here for all my answers. So I'm going to just box all the formulas that I'm using. Now, the first question is what's the lift coefficient? Well, this is cruise, so as we've done many times before now, we know that lift is equal to drag. And if you write that in terms of lift coefficient,
you can get an expression for the lift coefficient from that. So you're going to have 2 times the weight divided by the 1 half of rho infinity infinity square, the dynamic pressure, and S. Let's box this one. And if I plug in the weight, the surface area, and then the two densities at the different altitudes, I get my value of CL. And remember, CL has no units. And you're asked to ground to two decimals, so I'll, I'll do that. 0 0.18 for 12,000 feet and 0 0.48 at high altitude. The density is lower, so that means your lift coefficient has to be higher so that you can compensate for the same amount of weight, W. Okay, so second question, drag coefficient. So we use the parabolic drag model. So we'll write that the total drag coefficient, CD, is CD0 plus lift coefficient square divided by pi times the span efficiency times the aspect ratio. And again, we plug in the numbers. We have two different values for CL at the two altitudes, but the rest is the same. So we'll get that CD is 0 0.0514 when you're at low altitude and slightly larger 0 0.0601 at the higher altitude. And we always ask you to give us the drag coefficient with four decimal places. So 0 point and then four digits. And that's because it is customary for aerodynamics to talk in drag counts, and a drag count is 10 to the minus 4 CD. So now to the next question, L over D. That's simply the same as the ratio of lift to drag coefficient, and we have both. So I plug in the numbers. And this is where we're going to start seeing the big differences. L over D at 12,000 feet is only 3.52. And L over D at 35,000 feet is 7.96. Now first, we're flying at cruise. So first is equal to drag. So I'll put thrust here, and I'll put it in thousands of pounds. Round to the nearest thousand, and get 136 pounds when you're flying at 12,000 feet, and on only 69,000 pounds when flying higher. And for the last one, power, that is thrust power, it's going to be P, the thrust force times the flight velocity. So we plug the numbers for the power and we're going to give that in millions of pound feet per second. So we have 142 for the low altitude and only 57 million pound foot per second for the higher altitude. So the goal of this problem was for you to get a sense of why airplanes fly at such a high altitude, commercial airplanes. For the one thing, thrust. Relative to a 35,000 feet altitude, you're going to need more than two times the thrust if you want to cruise at a lower altitude of 12,000 feet. And requiring more thrust means that you're going to need a bigger engine. 
and so the weight of your aircraft, the structural weight, is going to be significantly larger. Now the other point is power. Relative to flying at 35,000 feet, you need almost two and a half times the power if you want to cruise instead at 12,000 feet. And power is very important because it's a direct measure of the fuel burn. So you're going to need about two and a half times more fuel to cruise at 12,000 feet than you need at 35,000 feet. The process that you went through in this problem is a simplification of what's actually happening, which is a very complicated optimization problem. You want to fly as fast as possible, of course, but not as fast as hitting the wall, very sharp increase in drag when you approach Mach 1. And again, we'll see why that is later on. So most airplanes want to fly at Mach 0.85 or so. Now, given that speed and the variation in density with altitude, you're going to require a bigger engine for flying at lower altitudes, and you're going to require significantly more fuel. Hence, most of the airplanes fly at about 30 to 35,000 feet above sea level.